lesson, we will talk about products and type of products. So as you may know, a service provider's offerings usually fall into two groups, products and services. So services are often recurring or anything to do with labor. And products are either physical items or software, for example. So items that can either be installed or can have a serial number are definitely products. And you will use products in the following features. For example, opportunities and quotes, inventory and procurement, and configuration items. So to set up products, you need to first have your material code set up, like we did earlier in the course. And next we will set up the product categories. So let's take a look at the product categories. So if we go to Autotask, we can go to the uh, menu in the top left corner and click on admin right here. And after you've clicked on admin, you can expand product services and inventory right here. And after you've done that, you see product categories right here. So we will click on it. And as you can see, we have um, a few categories for our product set up. So let me collapse them so it's easily or easier to see for you. And as you can see, we've set up our product categories in a few different categories. So we have computer accessories, domain reg registration, network, phone, printer, server, software, UPS, and workstation. So as you can see, these are the main offerings for a MSP company. And as you can see, there are a lot of plus signs here on the left-hand side. So we have a few subcategories. So under computer accessories, for example, we have stuff like cables, docking station, keyboard, monitor, etc. And if we go to domain registration, we have SSL cert, for example. So yeah, under network, we have firewall, router, switch, Wi-Fi. And as you can see, we've got a lot of different subcategories for each category. And yeah, you might want to pause this video when I click open a few categories so you can copy them to your own Autotask. After you've done that, we can go on with the next step, which is to import or to make our products. So yeah, let's, let's go to the next step which is uh, to import or make our, our products, which we can do by clicking on this arrow right here at the top of the screen to go back to the uh, admin menu. And as you can see, product services and in inventory is still expanded. So let's go to products right here. And as you can see, we. Uh, when we click on it, we will go to the product search. And as you can see, we have the categories right here in the middle of the screen. And for example, when I select workstation, I can also select our level two uh, product category. So as you can see, it's really easy or it's an easier way to search for different kinds of products. And yeah, well, let's get started um, with adding new products. So if you want to add a new product, there are two ways to do that. The first one is to manually enter new products by clicking on the new icon right here. And as you can see, a new screen will open um, and you will be prompted to give the product name. So yeah, and there are a lot of different fields here and it might be a little bit confusing, all, all of these, these different fields. So let's just go through them one by one. Okay, so let's make a new product. For example, we want to make a product which we will call tractor. Okay, and so we can select a product category right here by clicking on this icon. And as you can see, you have the product categories right here and you can just expand on them when you want to. And after you've done that, you can just select the correct category. So let's say for example, we want to select laptop, we can do that by clicking on it right, right uh, like I did. And it'll just fill it in under product category right here. Well, you can give the product a description. So let's say it has four wheels. And after you've given the description, you can also select a default configuration item type. So for this one, let's say we had laptop, so we will select workstation. And after you've done that, you can select the material code. 
So you can do that by clicking on this icon right here. And after you've clicked on the icon, you can just, you get a new screen and you can select the right material code. So let's say for this product, it's a non-textable product, for example. And yeah, after you've done that, you can just select the price cost method right here and the period type right here. So let's say it's a one-time item. And the unit cost is, for example, um, $1. And the unit price, for example, is, let's say, $1,000. You can even give the um, retail price right here. So it can be compared. You can give it an internal product ID. You can select the manufacturer or you can type it in. So let's say, for example, uh, I will fill in test right here and you have the MPN and the product SKU the, you can fill in right here. After you've done all those things, you can even upload a photo which will display from the um, ticket insights if you've activated them. So let's say, for example, I um, want to put in a photo of the tractor. I can upload it right here and as you can see, It'll display the photo right here and it will display on the product inside as also mentioned right here. So after I've done all those things, we can select a default configuration item category. So let's say for this one, it's an accessory. And here the billing type, we can either select standard per contact or per configuration item. So there's a lot of things to choose from. What this means is this field will determine when the products we are creating right now is visible or available for selection. So standard will mean that um, uh, this is a regular product. It'll be available for selection, for example, when we create a configuration item or tickets or project or stuff like that. But products with the standard billing type are not available for creating contract billing rules. So that's a very di important distinction. So for example, when you want to use contract billing rules, you have to either select the per contact or the per configuration billing type right here at the top. So yeah, that's, that's just something to keep in mind that either if you want to use the billing rules for per contact, then you have to actually select per contact right here. Or if you want to use it for the um, configuration item billing rules, then you have to actually select per configuration item billing rule right here. So it'll be available and visible for those billing rules. So let's just keep it standard for right now. And here I can either check and mark for if, if it should be serialized. And if it should be serialized when we get stock, then we can put in the serial numbers for uh, the stock. So it'll just keep track of those. And yeah, right here at the bottom, we can put in different kind of vendors and costs for when we want to use the procurement um, module from Autotask. So right now, if you want to use it, you can click on new right here and we can select a vendor. So for example, if you want to select a vendor, you can just click on this icon right here and select the vendor you want to use. So for now, I just select the generic vendor we have in our Autotask system. I can give in the cost right here. So if, let's say, for example, the unit cost for this vendor instead of $1 uh, might be $2. And I can give a vendor part number for the procurement module. So let's say the vendor part module uh, part number is, um, is this. I might want to put it in. And when I use the procurement mod module, I can just see the vendor part number right here so I can easily find it within this vendor. After I filled everything in, I can just click here on OK and it'll save this vendor and yeah, it'll save it, uh, save it for right now. After you've done all those things, what we can do is we can go back to the top and go uh, to the next step, which is user-defined for if you have user-defined fields or if you don't have any, you can go to the third tab, which is inventory. And if you go to inventory, it'll want to save this product. So we will just click OK. And as you can see, we can just now add inventory items for this product. 
And as you can see, after the product is saved, you will get a new tab, which is notes, and you can add certain kind of notes to this product right here. So let's go back to the previous page and go back to the product search. As you can see here, you can select all different kinds of filters to search for your products. And one really neat trick is the price list. So you can go to the price list by clicking on this button right here, view price list. And after you do that, you will get a new screen. And in this screen, like all of the product services and service bundles and material codes are visible in the screen. And you can just search for them by typing in this box or either filtering them by, for example, products or we can filter by service or um, even by service bundle or material codes. And here you can also filter by period type here in the third column. So for example, one time, or uh, either monthly, quarterly, uh, semi-annual, or yearly, for example. And you can even filter by product description if that's uh, something you want to do. And as you can see, when I select products right here, what I can do is I can very easily just change the unit cost and unit price if I want to, which is quite a neat trick. And after I've done that, I can just click on save here at the top of the screen and um, it'll save my changes to those products. So it's really handy if you want to, for example, change a few prices in for different kinds of products and you want to just do it very quickly instead of opening uh, each product separately.